بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدنا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون صدق الله العظيم Respected علماء الكرام Elders, brothers, mothers, sisters and students as we all know, the month of Ramadan is around the corner. And every year in the month of Sha'ban, in the month of Rajab, we have programs. And already for the last few weeks, I've been having programs around the UK, across the different towns and cities, all regarding the preparation for the month of Ramadan. And we start to think that we need to make a change in our life for the holy month of Ramadan. So. What the point we need to remember is not the preparation for the month of Ramadan only, it should be preparation for our life of the hereafter. Where the people, they will be regretting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَجِيءَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ وَأَنَّ لَهُ الذِّكْرَ On the day of judgment when Jahannam will be brought and people will remember يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ Man will remember what he did in this world. وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ And where will be the remembrance? There's no benefit at that time. And he will say, يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي That, oh, wish I put forward something for my life. لِحَيَاتِي So this is not our real life. The actual life is the life of the hereafter. We are just traveling at this moment of time. We were in Alam Arwah, in the world of souls, the waiting room. From there we came to the alam dunya and from alam dunya we have to go to alam barzakh So at this moment of time, all mankind, they are in these three, dif three different stages. Some of our brothers and sisters, they are in alam arwah in the world of souls. Some of them, they are in the alam dunya and many of our brothers and sisters have already gone to alam barzakh so at this moment of time, three different stages. But a time will come that we all of us will be in Alam Akhirat, all together. So even though we're in three different stages now, but a time will come, we will all go to Alam Akhirat. That's why when somebody passes away, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Indeed, we are for Allah and we are going to be returning back. Because these people will not be coming back to the world. There is no U-turn. Just keep on going. So we have to remember, my brothers and sisters, that this preparation is not only for Ramadan, it has to be preparation for the rest of our life. And how do we go forward? For our past, we do sincere Tawbah. So today's gathering, we need to focus that how can we make a transformation, a permanent change, a radical change. We can't just be messing about. Messing about time has finished. We need to really make a change in our life and we need to focus what's the purpose of life. Are we going to continue doing this? Every year we are deceiving ourselves. The month of Ramadan finishes, we're back to square one. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَلَّتِي نَقَدَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints a picture of a woman who was in Makkah Mukarrama. She was an insane woman. She used to be weaving from the morning till dusk and what is to happen is after the weaving when about to finish the piece of cloth she used to pull that string and all of the full cloth is to be back to square one so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us don't be like that we build we build we build in the month of shaban in the month of ramadan we read our tarawi we read the quran we give sadqa when the day of eid comes 
we completely destroy and demolish our building of the akhirat. This is what we are doing. And every year we have this reminder, we have this preparation. So the point here is we need to make a permanent solution to this, that we are going to make a change, not a temporary change, not just for the month of Ramadan. If we're going to stop sinning, we're going to stop sinning fully. And what's going to happen is, if we're going to start reading our salah, it's going to be a permanent one. Like one youngster last year, he performed all his entire salah in the month of Ramadan. On the day of Eid, at Zohar time, he was towards the wrong direction. I was coming towards the masjid, and all the entire month, he was coming before me to the masjid. But on the day of Eid, he was going towards the marketplace, and I was coming towards the masjid. I said, brother, salah, he goes, no mufti sahab, one month, that's sufficient. I've done enough namaz, that one month was so much for me. So the point here is we can't be a part-time Muslim. Are you believing in some part of the book and you're leaving and rejecting the other part? So we have to make a permanent change. And how can we do this? We need to make a start now. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us in the month of Shaban how we make the preparation. He increased his fasting, he increased his recitation, he increased his sadaqah. The Sahaba Karam, the pious predecessors, if we if they were told that today you're gonna to die by the evening, remember that they will not be able to increase even one minute amount of ibadat in their life because they are doing it to the maximum. They are doing the maximum ibadat. They are doing the maximum recitation. If they were told that you're going to die, we will be thinking, we'll try to do this, we'll try to... No, they were already on the right lane. They were already on the right track. So, mashallah, subhanallah, they were utilizing their time and valuing the time. They realize the purpose of life. So, we need to make a change. And how do we make a change? First of all, in the month of Shaban, we need to make some changes. What are they? Number one, our salah. We always talk about salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again. Yuqimuna salah wa yu'tuna zakah. Many a times. Why is he repeating it again for? Because to emphasize the importance and the significance of salah. So every day, every time we hear about salah, we think, oh, it's okay, I know about salah. How do we know about salah when we are not performing the salah? Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu anhu said, "Inna ahamma umuri kuma indi as salah. Indi the most important matter in my eyes is salah. Faman hafidha wa hafidha alayha faqad hafidha dinahu. The person who preserved the salah, who was punctual in salah, he has preserved his deen. Waman doyyaha fa huwa lima siwaha adiya. And those people who destroy the salah, they will destroy other thing even more. So the point, my brothers and sisters, we need to keep in mind, especially our sisters." Those sisters who have children, I request them to take the children to the other rooms and let the other sisters listen. So the appas who are there or the ones who are organizing, please keep that in mind. Those children who are making a lot of noise, if they take the children to the other classrooms, so basically the sisters who are in the Jamaat Khan, they could actually listen attentively. So remember this. Uh, so the point I was saying, we have to increase our salah. What, how do we do that? We make a firm intention that all the salah that we have missed. And we are sitting here, if we ask the question, how many of us we are sahib tartib On the day of judgment, the first thing to be reckoned on the day of judgment is salah. And we are told again and again, the Imam Sahib is talking, the Sheikh is talking, the scholar is talking all the time about salah, but our salah still hasn't been sorted out. Still, if we ask the question today, how many of us we read our salah on time, Fajr salah? We ask ourselves, how long are we going to be deceiving ourselves? No, we are practicing. Our nafs, what level of nafs is our nafs open? Is it on nafs ammara? Is it nafs lawam? Or is it nafs mutmainna? Because if we don't even realize, we don't even regret of committing this sin of omitting the salah, and we are going to our workplace, we are going to school and college, and we're not even bothered about it, and I'm afraid our nafs is nafs ammara. The worst type of nafs. It's not even regretting. Nafs al lawama at least is regretting. He does toba. He puts the alarm on. So we don't even have that much. We need to ask ourselves. We can't be deceiving. We can't be thinking to ourselves. No, Alhamdulillah, I'm a practicing brother. So many times when we ask, are you practicing? Alhamdulillah, I practice. What do you do? I go to Juma. That's our definition of practicing. At the time of the Sahaba Ikram, even the Munafiqun, they used to come for Fajr Salah and Isha Salah. 
And we, those people who are classed as those pious predecessors or the pious brothers, pious sisters. So if you ask them, then and now I perform my salah. Look at the level of our any righteousness. It's gone so low. So this is a big problem that we have. We have a very low bar. We need to increase that. That our level of ibadat has to increase and the faraiz has to be there. Shah Abdul Aziz Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, Man tahawana bin nawafil tahawana bil sunan, wa man tahawana bil sunan tahawana bil faraid, wa man tahawana bil faraid sulibal ma'rifa, wa man sulibal ma'rifa faqad waka'a fil kufr. A person who is heedless, who is neglectful, who is lazy in performing his nawafil, it will have an effect on his sunnats. And if he is, wa man tahawana bil sunan, if he is lazy in carrying out the sunnah, it will have effect on his faraz. And when he is lazy in performing his faraz, it will have effect on his recognition of Allah, ma'rifat of Allah. And when he, that ma'rifat of Allah, the recognition of Allah, the iman is taken away from his heart, then he will go into the ditch of kufr. Person doesn't realize. This is the reason we need to increase our ba. We need to be thinking what are the important things, what are the compulsory things. We need to make sure without a doubt we fulfill them. So in this month, Every one of us, we need to make a timetable and we need to make sure that we perform our qaza. We need to make sure we are up to date. And at the same time, we don't miss a single salah on a daily basis. That's the first important thing. And remember, we need to be punctual. Ahabbul a'mali ila Allahi ta'ala adwamuha wa in qalla. The most beloved action in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that action which is done constantly even though it's small. This is a very important point. The biggest problem we have is we, in the month of Ramadan, we'll be on cloud nine, we'll be on the highest level. But suddenly, straight away, we come down. We need to keep everything in moderation. Inna li kulli shay'in shirratan, wa li kulli shirratan, wa li kulli shirratin fatratan. For every single thing, there is an activeness. And for every activeness, there is a pause. There is a pause, there is a halt. So this is what's happening to us. So we need to make sure we have a system in place, steady system in place where we can continuously do it. Inna Allah la yamallu hatta tamallu. Allah doesn't get fed up until you don't get fed up. What does that mean? If we stop doing the good deeds, Allah will stop giving us a reward. That's what it means. So in terms of our salah, we need to make sure that we are performing our salah. We get our faraiz. Then Alhamdulillah, once that is done, then we can think about our nawafil. Mufti Azam, Mufti Mahmud al Hassan Gongoy Rahimahullah Ta'ala, subhanAllah, he came few times to Dalumberi. The, these people, the way they actually valued their time, he would come in the Jamaat Khana in the main hall and he will ask the person, his attendant, his Khadim, how many minutes have I got for the Faraz? He'll say two minutes, Allahu Akbar. He'll be starting his Nafal. That two minutes, why shall I not utilize my time? Our Hazrat Shaykhul Hadith Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sabdamat Barakatum, he said to us in the class that Mufti Mahmud Hassan Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he performs 100 rakat of nafal on a daily basis. With all being a Mufti Azam, he had the time to perform this amount of nafal. We can't even perform our qaza umri. We've been told so many times we need to perform them, we need to perform them, because these are the things that are going to be asked on the Day of Judgment. But these people, how they, subhanAllah, worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they, they couldn't even go one inch higher. This is the way they continuously worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first thing, we need to increase our salah. Secondly, we need to increase our fast. In the month of Shaban is the month of fasting. I have mentioned many of the masjid, many of the audiences, that at least in this month where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to fast the most, sometimes nearly the full entire full month at least we should try to fast on Mondays and Thursdays let us fast on Monday and Thursdays don't think that it's going to be so hard for us we have made it hard for ourselves let us look at our beloved Prophet Sayyida Aisha radiallahu says that we used to see the moon one month second month third month continuously three moon sighting and subhanallah not even one day we used to lit the fire in the oven no food so they asked that, how did you live? On water and date. And then we, subhanAllah, we can't even fast for one day. 
So let us get that habit. Don't just make a habit of fasting just in the month of Ramadan. The body, it says, Zakatul Jasadi as The Zakat of the body is fasting. Mondays and Thursdays, the A'mal, the Nama A'mal, the book of records, they are put forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented. The Prophet says, why do I fast on Mondays, Thursdays? So I want my book of records to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me in the state of fasting. as li wa ana ajzi bihi. Fasting is for me and I will give that reward. All the other good deeds is multiplied by 10. But fasting, there is no limits to it. Allah will give in tremendous amount. When Allah has said, I will give the reward, just imagine the reward. So my request to our brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, we need to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. Get the habit. Get the habit of fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. Even the medical experts, those who are non-Muslim, they have come to the conclusion that if a person fasts on Mondays and Thursdays, he will be away from all different types of illnesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure him from all the illnesses and Allah will keep him healthy. So even the medical experts, so one non-Muslim doctor, he's saying that if a person does that, it will detoxify the body, it will take all the toxins out, and his body will be healthy. And at the end, he says, this was also the way of the Prophet of Islam. Because he wasn't a Muslim. So all these things is benefit for us, physical benefits, spiritual benefits as well. The benefits of this world and the benefits of the Akhirah. So let us get this habit of fasting. Once the Prophet was eating, Bilal radiallahu ta'ala came and he said to Bilal, come forward and eat. So Bilal radiallahu ta'ala said, inni sa'im, I am fasting. The Prophet sallallahu got very happy because subhanallah, we are eating our rizq here, wa fadula rizqu Bilal in fil jannah. The rizq of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anu is being stored in jannah. So this habit of fasting, nowadays subhanallah, we just want to be munching something. We just want to be having a bubble gum or some kind of spearmint or whatever. We want something in our mouth. Get the habit of fasting. We need to get that habit of fasting. And subhanAllah, let me tell you, subhanAllah, the benefits. In our madrasa days, alhamdulillah, we used to fast. The reason I used to fast was obviously the reason uh, that the Prophet ﷺ kept it on Mondays and Thursdays. And many times we used to fast continuously just to do extra studies. Just to take and that time because eating time and then obviously if you eat then you have to go to the bathroom. So we used to save on a daily basis when we used to fast about one hour. So in one hour we could read about three, four Jews of the Quran. So for this reason we used to fast. We used to take that time. So that's the reason when we fast even now we see for ourselves the days we fast. Marshall, we can get double the work done. There's so much barakat. And try it out, my brothers and sisters. See the fast, how beautiful it is, how nourishing it is for the body. We might be thinking, subhanAllah, our body is feeling that. No, you see for yourself on the 5, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, that body, subhanAllah, feels so active. We need to try it out. Sahaba Ikram, the Awliya Ikram, Shaykh Allah Dismullah Muhammad Zakariya Sahabah, in his latter age, he was coming to Makkah, Mukarramah, and he was traveling and he was fasting. So his khadim, his attendant says, Hazrat, you're fasting at this? Because subhanallah, you don't know the re benefits of this fasting. So our pious predecessor, they fast until the end of the life. So let us increase our fasting in the month of Shaban. So the month of Ram Ramadan, it doesn't become hard for us. And then as I said, it's not just for the month of Ramadan. Let us make this habit that throughout the year, Mondays and Thursdays will be the days of our fasting, inshallah. Make that habit, fulfill the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And also, Another thing we should do is increase our recitation. We need to get our connection with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fi al-Quran. When we think of month of Ramadan, immediately we think about fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't talk about fasting. When he mentioned Ramadan, he mentioned that this is the month where the Quran was revealed. So the more important than fasting is the Quran. Unzila fi al-Quran. That's why Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala how beautifully he says Unzila ashraful kutub ala ashrafil rusul bi ashrafil lugat bi sifarati ashrafil malaika wa kana ibtida'u nuzuli fi ashrafi biqa'il ard wa kana fi ashrafi shuhuri sana fa kamula min kulli lwuju That the Quran was revealed the most noble book i.e. the Quran Majid was revealed upon the most noble prophet i.e. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the most noble language i.e. in Arabic through the medium of the most noble angels, i.e. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, it was revealed in the most noble of places, i.e. Makkah Mukarrama, and it was revealed in the most noble month, i.e. Ramadan. So it was complete in every angle. 
So we need to get that connection with the Quran. That we, subhanAllah, when do we open the Quran? Nowadays, the smartphones have completely destroyed us. When is the time that we open the Quran? We send the message, read Surah Kaf on Friday, read Surah Mulk before you go to sleep, read Surah Yas in the morning. We just send these messages. We don't even, the person who sends the message, he doesn't read himself. What kind of people are we? So instead of sending all these messages, let us open the Quran and let us read it. Shaykh al-Hadith Mullah Muhammad Zakariya Sawa Rahmatullah Alayhi, his daily ma'amul throughout his life was 10 Jews every day. Throughout his life. So busy person like him. If you read about his life, you will realize that how Allah subhanahu blessed these people's life. That was 10 Jews every day. That was his normal habit. In the month of Ramadan, it is to increase up to one complete Quran and sometimes up to two entire Quran on a daily basis. They realize, they understood the value of life. In terms of the time, in terms of the body, they utilized it. They sacrificed everything. So, his teacher and his mentor, spiritual mentor, Shaykh al Hadith Mawlana Khalil Ahmad Saharan Puri Rahmatullahi. In Tadkiratul Khalil Mawla Ashik Ilahi Mirti Rahimullah Ta'ala writes the Ma'amul, his practice, noble practice in the month of Ramadan. That every day, Shaykh al Hadith Mawlana uh, Khalil Ahmad Saharan Puri Rahmatullahi, he used to start from Suratul Fatiha and Suratul Baqarah in the morning after Subha Sadiq. And by the time it was iftar time, he used to be reading Qul Audhu Rabbil Fala Qul Audhu Rabbil Nas. And then he used to finish and conclude the day with his fast with the Quran as well and is to do the dua so these things we hear and we think to ourselves subhanallah how did they do it we can do it as well if we try okay we can't do full entire Quran but have you ever tried many a times once this hadith came Mala Yaqub Nanati Rahmatullah was teaching the students sat down and he was teaching the hadith where he says a person who reads two rakas salah and he doesn't have any waswasa coming, then all his past sins are forgiven. So one student asked, is that possible? Mullah Yaqub Nanati Rahmatullah Ali said, have you tried? We don't try. Try it out. So these are things, many times I thought to myself, subhanAllah, I always narrate this. I have to try it myself. I feel a hypocrite and he was saying it every time. So when I was in Makkah Mukarramah last time, so after the Tarawih Salah, I sat down and I had some zamzam water in front of me. So what I thought to myself, these people, subhanAllah, how they did it. So at least in my life, once, let me try this out. So 9.35 we started, and Alhamdulillah, within six hours, we finished the entire Quran. So I thought, I'll try it out. These people did it all entire life. You know, Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, his normal habit was daily one khatam Quran every day. And in the month of Ramadan, it was two. One in the daytime, one in the nighttime, with the one extra one in Taraweeh. It is possible. When I mentioned this one sister, subhanAllah, she said, uh, she sent me a message and she said, Inshallah, you know, you have given me the hope and last year I did 15 khatam, so this year I'm going to double it. There are people who can do it. Our respected teacher, Shaykh Abdul Rahim Sahib, Damat Barakatuhum, subhanAllah, he, his ma'amul, we've heard and we've seen him reading, subhanAllah, that one entire Quran daily plus another 10. That's 40 Jews every day. And for the sisters, they might be thinking, no, we have so much work to do. The mother of Mullah Ilyas Sab Rahmatullah Alayhi, Safiya Rahmatullah Alayha, she used to recite 40 Jews on a daily basis in the month of Ramadan. So these were human beings. These are people like us. I always say the Fantastic Four. Sayyidina Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in front of Maqam Ibrahim, in one rakat, the entire Quran. Tamim Adari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu behind Maqam Ibrahim in one rakat the entire Quran. Sa'id ibn Jubair rahimahullah ta'ala behind Maqam Ibrahim in one rakat the entire Quran. Our great Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi behind Maqam Ibrahim in one rakat the entire Quran. These people, they did it. So for us to think that we can't do it and we can't even read one juz and we can't even finish one khatam, subhanallah. Allah is going to ask us on the day of judgment. My servants, they did it. What, what did you do? You were so busy? You were so busy, you didn't have no time. That salah, the value of that salah, that when the salah time starts, tawaf e kaaba stops. Nobody can do tawaf of the Kaaba at that time. And our business, subhanAllah, we opened it, that, that it stops us from reading our salah. What kind of business is this? 
The salah, the status of it is that the tawaf of the Kaaba stops and ours, subhanallah, nothing stops. Our business continues, but namaz stops for us. This is the thing that we need to keep in mind. So I was saying that we need to increase. And with the Quran recitation, subhanallah, we need to have that connection. What do we read in our salah? Do you know the meanings of these ayats? Like alhamdulillah, one of our students from Bukhari class, Asmat, mashallah, he's written what the tafsir that happens on saturdays so pearls from the quran and we recommend all our brothers and sisters to purchase that book pearls from the holy quran mashallah is come out and only six surah it only covers six surah and in that it explains the meaning and all the spiritual points behind these surahs the surahs that we read so i will request all our brothers and sisters these books which are there in this month and the month of Ramadan, we need to connect ourselves. Nowadays, we just sit down with a smartphone and we're just wasting our time. Let us connect ourselves with the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the books of Hadith, with the books of the pious people, and let us read them. So we have these bookstalls. There are all the books for all different ages. We have stories for children. We have books for adults. We have books for teenagers. So these are books for us to study. So this book, which is out, I would recommend everybody to go through these surahs. It has... Uh, this six surah in one volume so get hold of that book and go over it and read it through we need to get that connection with these books and we need to make sure another point here is in the month of ramadan instead of wasting our time just listening to all these youtube clips and everything let us utilize our time in recitation and studying the books and at the same time we need to increase our sadaqat. Ma naqasa malum min sadaqa. The month of Shaban, the month of Ramadan. As I said, it's not only the month of Ramadan. When we continue, obviously month of Ramadan will give a lot more. But that doesn't mean we stop. Many of the brothers, what happens is, no, I've given my money. So somebody comes to us in the month of Shawwal. No, you have to wait till Ramadan now. Bichara, <laughs> he needs money now. And you're saying, no, no, you know, if you live till next year, I know you're hungry. I know you need money, but I can't give it because I'm only waiting for Ramadan and Ramadan will get 70 times more. Brother, at that time to give that needy person will get more reward than Ramadan. We need to understand these masail. A lot of people think, no, I've given all my zakat money in Ramadan. I've got nothing left for the rest of the 11 months. We are full-time Muslims. shaitan. So let us make a habit of giving sadaqa. As I said, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِن there's so many ways of giving and in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get the reward. Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa. Every day one angel comes down and he prays for the person who gives. Allah give the person who spends in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a good reward. And those people who don't spend, the bakhil, the miser. Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa. Allah give the person who withholds, who mises, give him destruction. Badwa. So the Prophet was so generous. Kana ajwad an nas, kana asja an nas, kana ahsan an nas. He was the most handsome. He was the most generous. He was the most brave. These were his qualities. So we as Muslims, how can we be a miser? How can we be those who just withhold? We need to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We got these opportunities to give. Give it before it is too late. So we need to increase the good deeds. And the month of Ramadan, subhanAllah, as I said, don't just make preparation for the month of Ramadan. We need to make the preparation for our life after death. And when we close our eyes, then it will be too late. Like subhanAllah, one of our students who studied here, many of you will know, we let the, uh, read the janaza on uh, Tuesday, Tajuddin, Marhum, he passed away. He was only 27 years old. He's a student of our JKN Madrasa. Who knew he's going to pass away? Few days before, we did, nobody could even think that he's going to leave us. But he's gone to the next stage. Don't think that, oh, we're not going to die. Like one of the graveyards, it was written in the, in the Middle East in Arabic, on the slab, on the <coughs> gravestone. Ya waqifu inda qabri, la tata'ajjam min amri. Oh, the ones who are standing in front of my grave, don't be astonished at my condition. Yesterday I was like you, tomorrow you'll be like me. We all have to go. So today I request all our brothers and sisters to specially pray <coughs> for Tajuddin Marhum. 
and also our other student who passed away some years ago, Zainul Abidin Marhum, and also our another one of the first student in our madrasa, Al Haj Moinamiya, who passed away, who was also our student as well. So, so many of our students are passing away. It's an eye opener for us. Just last week, one of our <coughs> relatives in Oldham, Al Haj Wahidur Rahman, he passed away, leaving behind young children. We don't know when death is going to approach us. We need to be prepared before it is too late. And at that time, subhanallah, a person will say, Rabbana akhrijna na'amal salihan ghayral ladhi kunna na'amal. That Allah bring me back so I don't do these bad deeds, I'll do all good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Awalam nu'ammirkum ma yatadhakkaru fihi man tadhakkar. Did I give you time? Please my brothers and sisters, especially, you know, Tajuddin's death really made me think. And Al-Hajj Wahidur Rahman, I got the message at Fajr time. And I still can't take his image from my uh, mind, subhanallah. A person young, Tajuddin, very young, prime of his youth, just recently got married. He had so much high hopes in his life. And one thing he said, subhanallah, that to his parents, that if I get better, I will come back to Jake and Madrasa to finish my studies. That's the amazing thing. And the good, amazing thing is, I can't remember, whilst he was studying, I can't remember net even telling him, off once. He was so obedient child. Obedience. Even his parents, when I was talking to them, they said our our child was so obedient. He used to be doing khidmat. That the father used to come from work. He used to be coming from immediately from attic. And he used to always say, Father, do you need anything? Any khidmat that needs to be done. Very obedient. I hope and he, that all our brothers will and sisters will do dua. And inshallah, ta'ala Allah has given him a good abode in Jannah. That's the prayer that we do uh, for him as well. And for all our other brothers and sisters who have passed away. It's very important, my brothers and sisters, let us make today as an our eye opener. And let us make a prayer. Because Islam is so beautiful. You know, we just have to do tawbah. <coughs> and after the tawbah, subhanallah, we are clean sheet. So easy. Our Islam is so beautiful. Atta even a zambi kama la zambala. A person who does toba from sins as though he's got no sins. And remember, kullu bani Adam khatta unu khayrul khatta in tawabun. All son of Adam, they are sinners. And from all the sinners, the best are those who do toba. So let us do toba today and let us make a <coughs> difference in our life. Let us get the recitation of the Holy Quran in our life. Let us get our salah in our life. Let us get the fasting in our life. This life is very, very short. We can't waste it. The month of Ramadan is around the corner. Don't just make Ramadan as the time that we're going to do ibadat. No, we're going to continue this. Wa'abud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until yaqeen comes. Yaqeen here refers to death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq. So as I mentioned, the books, the new books are out. So please any get them make a small library have all the jaykan publications subhanallah i've been to different towns and cities and the beautiful thing is <clears throat> this dream i don't know if it has been mentioned there was this girl uh, from uh, huddersfield called ruqayya she came with her parents and cho uh, siblings they said i saw the prophet sallallahu in my dream and he was in Masjid Nabawi, yeah. Mufti Sahib, I saw the Prophet Islam, you and the Prophet were walking together and he stopped at near me and he said, Assalamu alaikum ya Ruqayya, Assalamu upon you Ruqayya. And then I didn't know a single word of Arabic and the, I was speaking Arabic with the Prophet Islam. And the Prophet Islam asked me, how do you spend your time? So she said, I read, she pointed towards me, I read Mufti Sahib's books. The Prophet Islam became very happy. Because which of the book of Mufti Sahib do you like the best? So she said, heroes of Islam. So please, I'm not here to you know, sell my book, Astaghfirullah. But I'm trying to say to you, brothers and sisters, we need to get that connection with the Prophet ﷺ. That book, the reason I thought afterwards, when she told me, I looked at the book straight away. I said, what is the reason why did the Prophet ﷺ, and he especially and he say and praise that book? And the first title of that book is Thinking About the Prophet. It's a very good article. It says that if you're going through any hardship, think about the Prophet. If you're going through any sadness, think about the Prophet. If you're going through any happiness, think about the Prophet. When you have somebody passed away, think about the demise of the Prophet ﷺ. A beautiful article. So we need to get ourselves connected. 
We need to get ourselves connected before it is too late. So my br beloved brothers and sisters, it's time that we make a change. MashaAllah, many brothers and sisters have come all the way from Northampton, from London, from Birmingham, from Manchester, from Oldham, from different parts of the UK. So, uh, I congratulate you, MashaAllah, for you making that effort of coming. But we want to give you something at the same time that for myself as well as yourself as well, that we need to make a change before it is too late. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب